Hello folks. I recently put together two test jumpers so I can test the current draw of welders on both 240 and 120 volts. I have tested a couple welders already and I will test any welder I review going forward. But I have access to a bunch of different welders right now so I decided to test and compare all of them. I'm interested to see if there are any big differences in efficiency and if so, does the difference in cost correlate in any way to the difference in efficiency? So I've got all the welders I will be testing on the bench. I will test the draw of each welder at max output, but I will also do a test with the output amperage of each welder carefully matched. That should provide a good point of comparison between all the welders. I will be testing the Miller Maxstar 210, the Fronius TransPocket 180, the ESOB Rogue ES180i, the Everlast PowerArc 160i STH, the Amico Power Arc 200, and the tiny little ZX200. Now this is the only welder here that is not capable of running on 120 volts, so obviously I will only be testing it at 240 volts. Starting with the ZX7200, I was surprised to find that the max output was nearly 140 amps, but it has the least stable output of any of the welders, bouncing from the upper 120s to the lower 140 amp range. The draw at that output was 28 to 29 amps. I settled on 136 amps as the number to run all the other welders at on 240 volts for the rest of the comparisons. The Everlast gave 162 amps maximum output on 240 volts while drawing only a few amps more than the ZX7200 did when maxed out. When the output was matched with the 136 amps that the ZX7 provides, output was a bit lower at around 25 amps. So the Everlast is a bit more efficient. When maxed on 120 volts, the Everlast gives 91 amps of output with a draw of about 30 amps. The Emico Arc 200 is very similar to the Everlast. It draws around 25 amps when welding at 136 amps on 240 volts and draws around 30 amps when welding at 91 amps on 120 volts. It maxes out around 120 amps on 120 volt but draws 50 amps. It maxes out at 190 amps on 240 volts, drawing around 38 amps. The ESOP Rebel draws significantly less current at a given output. It draws only 22 amps or so when maxed out at 180 amps on 240 volts. When welding at 136 amps, the draw was only 14 to 15 amps. On 120 volts, when welding at 91 amps, it draws around 21 amps. Maxed out on 120 volts, it draws 29 to 30 amps, but it has 110 amps of output. The Fronius is very similar to the Rebel on 240 volts. It draws only 21 amps or so at the maximum 180 amp output on 240. When set at 136 amps of output, it only draws 14 to 15 amps. On 120 volts, it draws just 20 amps or so at 91 amps of output. It draws around 30 to 32 amps when maxed out on 120 volts, but it has 120 amps of output at that point. The Maxstar draws 30 to 31 amps on 240 volts at max output of 210 amps. More draw than the Fronius or ESOB, but that's 30 extra amps of output as well. At 136 amps of output, it draws around 15 to 16 amps, so pretty similar. On 120 volts, it draws around 22 amps at 91 amps of output. Maybe a tiny bit more draw on the Max Star than with the ESOB or Fronius, but they're all three very close. In the end, there was a fairly obvious dividing line. Clearly, the more expensive welders draw far less current at a given output, and I believe that the difference is largely due to those welders having power factor correction, while the other three do not. There were small differences otherwise, but that was the main dividing factor, and it makes a big difference in the amp draw. Keep in mind, unless your electric rates are outrageous or you are welding a lot, 
the difference isn't going to save you a meaningful amount of money on your electric bill. But it does mean that those more efficient welders will be less likely to trip a breaker, they'll work better on an extension cord, they'll provide higher output on a given circuit, and they should work a bit better running off of a generator. Either way, it is interesting to see the clear difference between welders with and without power factor correction. And I think that's pretty much it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.